Welcome back to Dragon Claw. Today is a first. Uh, it is the first time I'm going to review a knife that is not mine. <clears throat> so thanks Ant for the loaner. Uh, he wanted me to uh, show this knife on, on uh, my channel. Uh, he really dug it and I, I get it why I get why. So it's a pretty cool knife. This is the Koala Tree Haswell Survival Knife. Uh, let's get into some of the specs and then we'll go into some of the softer review. Uh, let's see, right out the gate, specs wise. Uh, four inch blade, four inch handle, eight inch overall. Real simple. Uh, one of the coolest things about this knife um, is, oh, I thought I could make it stand. And I can't. Uh, is that spine? You can see really thick spine. It is uh, almost quarter inch. So you see that really up close. Uh, yeah, it might focus. Um, yeah, 0.19 inch, we'll call it just under a quarter inch thickness, uh, and 14 ounces. Uh, which is thick, uh, a thick um, blade on there, uh, and a heavy overall knife for something that's, I'll say this small, you know, it's eight inch overall, four inch blade is not exactly small. <clears throat> uh, I will say for a quote unquote survival knife, in my opinion, yeah, it's a little small. Uh, if you're gonna use a survival knife, you're gonna have something a lot bigger than a, <clears throat> than a four inch blade, in my opinion. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, brass rivets, well, really nice, beautiful walnut handle, as you can see. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just getting over something, so bear with me. Um, steel 1095, uh, which is a hot, uh, high carbon uh, steel, not as tough as other steels. Uh, although it's it's got just under 1% carbon content, like I want to say 0.95%. Um, but it's not as tough as others because uh, I believe uh, it's a little low on the manganese, uh, which is used as a hardener. So I could go on and on about uh, 1095, um, but I'm going to leave it at that. Feel free to Google uh, if you're not familiar with 1095. It's one of many favorite steels uh, in, in knife making. So, what else? Specs wise, that's pretty much about it. Um, we can start getting into some of the cooler things, uh, like full tang. Uh, when you're talking, you know, in general, um, fixed blades, in my opinion, full tang is the way to go, it just period doesn't matter when you're talking survival knife if you want to call it a survival knife and uh, again my opinion yeah it, it's got to have a full tang um, you know true survival scenarios um, having your knife break on you uh, in a survival scenario is just catastrophic so you know a, a half tang even three-quarter tang they are going to be much more likely to break uh, under high stress so uh, which also makes you question the 1095 in a survival knife. Uh, typically, you want something a little bit harder. Um, although it's harder to sharpen, it uh, will typically hold that, that sharp edge longer and less likely to snap. So, But again, I won't get into that. Um, so, one of the biggest questions I had was the authenticity of the hand forge as you can see uh, it has a hand forged look so I wasn't sure if that was legit um, so I started doing some digging <clears throat> and I'm still not convinced uh, one way or the other I do know that the first run of this koala uh, koala tree has well survival knife was a small batch run. I want to say like 50 knives were all that were made. Uh, and they were all made, I believe, by a single person here in the States, maybe Utah, I, I think. 
Um, and it was truly hand forged by that person. Qualitry does say now they are mass produced in China by, I'll paraphrase and say, um, it's hard for me to think of a good paraphrase. Uh, they're all, all, all hand forged in China. So I'll, I'll say reputable, for lack of a better word. Um, <clears throat> reputable uh, forgers. Uh, and it doesn't sound right. It sounds so wrong. Uh, hand forgers in China. So take it for what it's worth. Is it truly hand forged? Um, yeah, I don't know. So I, there's just some things that I, I kind of question on it. But I won't get into that because I can't, I can't, uh, I can't say one way or the other. So verdict's still out. Um, so one of the cool things I do like about that knife and it's, you know, these are, are always hard to see. Let's see if you can see that grind. It's really tough to catch it on the camera. Uh, it is a Scandi grind. So, um, you know, short for Scandinavian, which is just a wedge, you know, a basic wedge shape for the most part is a Scandi grind. Um, that's great for survival situations. So good on uh, Koala Tree. Uh, if you're going to have a survival knife, and again, I'm, you know, I'm throwing out a lot of my opinions, but that's what this channel is uh, about, my opinion. Uh, Scandi grind is um, kind of goes hand in hand with your survival knife. So it widens your broadens your use of that knife um, for different scenarios so scanning grind is good for survival knives um of course lanyard hole not i'm not a big fan of lanyard holes um but in scenarios of survival knives uh outdoor camping type knives uh things that you're going to use in place of a hatchet or an axe things like that <clears throat> uh i do like uh, lanyard holes in those scenarios so good there um, so overall really really thick blade and that Scandi grind uh, do make for a good outdoor knife uh, size wise I wouldn't call it survival knife um, but yeah to each your own someone might like that sh that smaller size survival knife um, I'll talk more about the scabbard here in a second, uh, but it is a really cool feature, believe it or not. Um, let's see. Um, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned the, the hand forged look. Even if it's not real, it looks it looks pretty authentic, and I I like it. It looks good. Um, that I think I mentioned fourteen ounces, which is quite a heavy knife. Um, you can go either way on survival scenarios if a heavy knife is good or bad. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in my opinion, you want to stay somewhere in the middle. Not too heavy, not too light. Um, so this is a little on the heavy side. So I'd lean towards and a little too heavy. So take it for what it's worth. Um, let's see. Bulkiness. It's a little bulky, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for my big hands. It fits well. Uh, the handle size itself for my big hand is a little small, uh, but the girth it is good for my big hand. So that I don't mind at all. Um, I would say probably too big, too bulky for a true EDC, um, but definitely uh, an occasional carry. Uh, camping, things like that is perfect. Um, you know, they, they do tout it again as a survival knife. Most people think when they think survival knives, um, you know, they might think of the, the Rambo knife or whatever where you have a bunch of cool things in the handle. You pop off the, the cap at the bottom of the handle and you've got a little um, compass and inside you have a bunch of cool things um, you know fishing line and hooks and um, wire, uh, wireless um, water resistant matches things like that uh, that's not a real survival knife don't get me wrong these things are cool uh, you know if, 
if, if I'm truly in survival mode, yeah, it'd be nice to have uh, some of those things. Um, but that's not your, I'll call it more typical or true survival knife. Um, so, I, you know, I've got a little problem with them calling it a survival knife just because that, um, the sheer size. Uh, but everything else they nailed. Um, scabbard, uh, I've really left uh, the best for the last. Um, they have really gone out of their way on the scabbard, in my opinion. It is uh, just an awesome creation. Uh, the leather is um, just a, a real thick, hardened leather. Um, they're, uh, you know, like uh, you know, press board, whatever it is, uh, insert here. Uh, really good, solid great stitching, great rivets. Um, it's not so hard where it's not pliable at all, but at the same time, you can lock this blade in here and you, you can kind of feel where it, it gives for a second like, and then, and then catches again. And when that happens, this thing, it's, there you go, you can see, eh, it's pretty difficult to get out of there, which is a good thing uh, with, this, with this type of scabbard. Um, I mentioned there's that spot where it kind of gives and then stops. That's that sweet spot. It'll go a little bit more, but you don't need to. There it is. There you go. Um, so, uh, yeah, awesome scabbard. Um, the Koala Tree Haswell Survival Knife. Two thumbs up. I do like it. Again, maybe not to say a quote unquote survival knife, um, but it's a great, great fixed blade. And that's all I've got for now. Thank you for coming out.